My name is Chad Matthews, and I'm a missional storyteller. I've traveled all over the country building friendships with men and women experiencing homelessness, capturing their stories, and seeing how they live. Now I'm back home in East Texas where I've asked 15 of my best friends to share their story of what it's like to live life on the street. My mom left my dad when I was 17 months old because he was a real bad alcoholic and he wouldn't quit drinking and he abused her and she didn't want the same thing to happen to me. So her, she left my dad the same time my grandmother left my grandfather and they both moved in together in the Grimm Hotel. My mother was disabled. She had cerebral palsy. So she got an SSI check, her and my grandmother both. That's not a lot of money, but that's how they raised me. I didn't really know my dad much because he wasn't around. So my mother and grandmother took care of me and I had to start taking care of my mother because my grandmother was getting sick. And by the time I was 12 years old, I practically ran the whole house. I started doing the rebellion thing and I wound up in Hot Springs with someone else that I wound up marrying and he was even worse. He beat the mess out of me every time he got a chance. And then I got pregnant, had my son William, and when I started finding unexplainable bruising on my baby, he was about 10 months old and I called my mom because I wasn't even allowed to call her from my house. I had to call her collect from a payphone when I went to work. She says, well, when are you going to leave him? I said, well, mama, I've been thinking about that. And she said, if I came tonight, would you leave? I said, yeah. She said, well, Jeannie's here. Let me talk to her. Call me back when you get your break. And I did. And she says, we're on our way. And I left and never went back. I had several different boyfriends off and on, nothing that really worked. Then one day Johnny calls and he comes to visit and we start talking and we get back together. Then things are good for a while. I moved down to Denton with him and he's working in the oil field. And we Messed with drugs a couple times, but nothing real serious. Then he had a car wreck, which got really bad. My back was hurt, my neck was hurt, my shoulder was hurt. I couldn't do anything. The house was a wreck. I had two kids to take care of. So, pain pills just knocked me out. They didn't do anything for the pain. So Johnny goes and gets some dope. And then I can move and I can clean my house. And it just started off little by little and got progressively worse so now I have a drug charge so when I was in jail on that charge uh, CPS came out and removed the kids from my father-in-law because they said he wasn't able to care for them so it took us a year that time to get the kids back they stayed home with us for about a year we were living in Wichita Falls then we got a place to live and things were doing good for a little while there and then it got hard to keep the bills paid so we started doing other things again and one thing led to another the kids got taken the second time and this time they didn't come back And that left me and Johnny with nothing. And it's been in and out of the streets ever since. We'll work for a while and be able to hold things together. And then something will happen and the job will fall through and we'll run right back up out in the street again. Being homeless, every day you have to get up fairly early if you want to catch the Blue House. Which they give you a sack lunch, that's snacks and stuff, you know, that you can eat for the day. And then you go, go down to the Friendship Center for lunch. And you can, sometimes you can catch day work from there, but not very often. 
I mean, it's just a struggle every day. You have to find a place to charge your phone. You have to carry water so you have something to drink. You have to be at Salvation Army at a certain time or you don't get to eat. If you work for a day and, and you don't get paid that day, but you don't make it to the Salvation Army, you may not eat anything that night. If, uh, if you're not there in time to take a shower, because you can shower from six to seven, anyone can. But if you're not there during that time, then you have to find another way to clean up. Or it's just it's just a daily struggle. You have to worry about the police or people just driving down the street and screaming things at you because they think you're worthless. Because you they think you don't want to work, but jobs just aren't easy to get. But I haven't seen either one of my kids in four or five years now. Baby, I may never see again. The only bright spot is William, my oldest, he's turning 16 this year in July. And his counselor says on his 17th birthday, she will personally take him to the bus station, give him his money, put him on a bus, and send him home. That's the only bright spot I've got to look forward to. Go back and do something different, what would you do? I'd never do that first drug, no matter what. I mean, at the time I thought I was helping myself because it's the only way I could not hurt to do the things that needed to be done. But in the long run, It's what tore everything apart. I mean, I don't have anything to do with any of my family now. I, I could call them up. Well, I'm glad to hear from you. And one main struggle, I don't know, it's just not having any family. It gets lonely, then? Yeah. I mean, you have nobody. You have no real friends. God, He provides for me every day. Might not have everything I want, but I pretty much have everything I need. It's the only thing that gets me through the day, knowing that he he's still there if no one else is. One time we were needing money to, to wash laundry with. We found a, a lottery ticket that I guess they didn't know how to play it right or something. One of those bingo tickets had $7 on it, just what we needed. Enough to wash clothes and buy a pack of tobacco. I mean, it's just like little things like that. I think it's God. I mean, stuff can't happen just on its own.